Well, a big shout out to any of you who also put orders in at my oh crap target of 17,789. Your orders got filled just like mine and now we are in profit. Congratulations, guys. But honestly, I did not expect it to hit those price points so quickly. Bitcoin has been moving to these things, cutting like a hot knife through butter. I was expecting this not to hit until about another week or two. Within days after I put that target up there, boom, came right to it. But that is the magic of Fibonacci. So congratulations, guys. Today, we're going to take a closer look at Bitcoin. I'm going to stay with the one hour chart at first, just for you guys that are looking for some more short term action. Then we'll kind of zoom out and I'll explain what's going on in the bigger picture. So stick with me. Road dog crypto. All right, let's take a closer look on the one hour. We'll draw some trend lines here. I've got one touching these top two points there. And I like to start out that way. I like to take that. I'll press control and grab that to make a copy and bring it down. And what this does is keep that angle and you will find that price action travels first into a channel and then we kind of make patterns within that channel and or go outside of that channel and then we can chart it from there too to get more information but i first like to start with a channel and then figure out patterns from then on out because i have found that to be the most effective way for me we brought that down and we have a strong internal trend line that we can use to kind of gauge what's going on. Alternatively, we could just connect these dots here and find a bigger channel, which since we've got it pulled up, this is called a megaphone, a broadening wedge, and it's pointing to the downside, but this is actually a bullish pattern. Most of the time, these downward facing megaphones break to the upside, but let me go back up and go back to our original trend line that we just made and see what we've got here. If you see it, price action bumps outside of that trend line, touches the bottom, it came back into that pattern that is very bullish when you see price action do that you can usually always figure that it is going to at least come back up and retest the top of this trend line or possibly even break out of that trend line retest it and either one continue up or trick us all with a bull trap and then drive that price all the way back down or lower We've got to watch these areas right up here right around 22,000 and if we can break above this area and get into 23,000 and hold it, we've got a shot of going up. And it's just kind of iffy right now. Now, Ichimoku's given us some hope that we may have a bounce here around the 19,700 around that area, or maybe even come back to the bottom of this trend line and bounce up. Definitely a possibility. But now let's zoom out a little bit and look at our indicators. And we see there are stochastics that are right here on the market cipher. You can get this indicator separate and it's easier to see, um, but they're starting to bottom out here. So that indicates that we could get a push up there. However, our MACD is going a little bit bearish right now which indicates that we could come down before we see that. And our RSI may be getting to a bounce point. Now, if we look closely at the RSI and draw a line, a trend line right here from this bottom to this bottom, we can see that this line is sloping upward. However, on our RSI, we can see that that is sloping downward. What that does is create a divergence. In this case, it's called hidden bearish divergence. That can also indicate a move to the upside, although not necessarily a strong one. Since we are in an overall downtrend when you get hidden bearish divergence, it usually means a lift up, but we're still overall most likely going to keep in that same trend of going down. So keep that in mind and be cautious about that. So over the next, say, 18 to 36 hours, we can kind of go by this one hour chart and hopefully we'll see a break to the upside. Now let's also break this pattern down and see what we've got. Now, this is a rising wedge. Seven out of 10 times, these break to the downside. That's what this did. Now, if we take a measured move from this and go from the top to the bottom to get our measure, and while we're talking about measured moves, let me say this quickly, is a way of simplifying all of these mathematical formulas, because technically you would be calculating price from this area to this area, taking that difference, adding it to here, is an equation, multiplying it by a percentage. Our shortcut is, to do the measure move, but just by taking a stick, drawing a line from the top of it to the bottom. So once we get that, we put this where the price broke out and then it gives us a target, which is right around 18,500. This pattern is telling us that we have a highly probability of coming down to this area before we see a bounce. We also could catch a bounce at the area of this overall major trend line. So we have to keep that in mind. But there is one reason why I'm bringing up this measure move. There are some teachers that I've seen that are very sloppy with this and they will take a measure move and they will mention something about taking it to an angle or whatever. 
Once you touch that, you've invalidated that measure move. Once you touch that, this thing moves, okay? And we can stretch that wherever you want to look impressive. I don't trust anyone who takes their measure move and stretches it or moves the angle on it because there's no use. What you need for your measure move is this actual measure. Why this is so important is that you got to remember that all these lines, these, these support and resistance lines that we're figuring out, trend lines right here, Fibonacci areas, they're really a zone, just like what I've got right here. There's an area above it and below it that we can use to trade. It's not really a cut in stone price. It's an area. So if we're not going to be accurate with that, what is the point? This is like a surgeon taking an x-ray of a tumor that he's going to remove to find the exact location. But when the patient gets to the table, we're just kind of picking out willy nilly. Oh, we'll cut here. It doesn't make any sense. So just be cautious when you see that and people that you may be viewing or teaching, that is just sloppy TA. You, you never want to add sloppy TA to your toolbox. That's just kissing your money goodbye. So just to quickly reiterate, we have a bullish pattern here, and then we have a bearish pattern that broke back into it and broke down. It's going to be curious to see how this is. We could break down and come back out, maybe come back in. We could just bounce off that line. It looks though like we should be heading up. However, if we do break below this green cloud of this Ichimoku, that does indicate a bearish move and we may see some more downward action. So if we don't get a bounce here, be cautious. We may be coming back down here to make a double bottom for taking the leg up. Now, if we do zoom out to the daily, we can see that things are starting to look a little bit bullish for Bitcoin, indicating that we may be getting an upswing. Now, it may trade sideways for a little while before we do that, and most likely it probably will, but it is pointing toward that we could be looking for that leg up. Maybe that double bottom will come in, or maybe we'll just carry on from here. But the market cipher is printed a green dot that has been confirmed. Money flow has not yet started taking the upturn. However, the stochastic RSIs on the daily have bottomed out and they are pointing toward the up direction. Our MACD is also looking a little bullish. It has not yet crossed, but we notice that the wave is taking an upturn. We're starting to get a curve here. That's bullish. And also our RSI is also taking a move up here. It is currently at 20, which is extremely low for the daily. Now, if we also take a look at the fear and greed index, we can see that we have had crazy numbers. I've never, ever seen it down as low as six. These are excellent times traditionally, historically, to buy into Bitcoin, as this usually signals a bottom. Now, we don't know for sure that a bottom is in, and I personally do not think so. I think we could very well be heading lower, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. But this is a great short-term time to put some skin into the game. And if you're dollar cost averaging, these are the numbers that you want a dollar cost into, because it will pay off in the long run. Now, if you will notice, our previous targets that we had, 21,642, 20,381, they did get hit a lot quicker than I'd expected. We kind of just busted right through those. Those areas of support are now our resistance. Those are the areas that's going to be hard for us to break a if we do see Bitcoin breaking above it and holding it, positive sign that more upside is possibly on the way. We come up to 21,600, hold that, things are looking good. We should entertain the thought that maybe, just maybe, this Wyckoff reaccumulation event should not be counted out yet. And let me give you two reasons why I don't want to count it out. I want to keep it on the back burner. It is definitely not confirmed, but this is the way that Wall Street has traditionally traded for over a hundred years, they like to drive people down where they just doubt everything and capitulate. And then they move that price way back up fast and heavy. Our current pattern on Bitcoin is just textbook for that. And also looking at this weekly, we are in a bullish pattern on Bitcoin. Now I'm not trying to be a moon boy by any means, but if we were to break back up into this pattern and hold those levels about 25,000 or more, we have a very strong chance of coming up to the top of the pattern around 30,500, breaking out of that. And this pattern seven out of 10 times plays to the upside. And when it breaks out of the pattern and comes back in, you usually see a hard move to the upside. That's what we want to keep our eye on. If that happens, that leads right into that whole Wyckoff reaccumulation theory too. My only concern is how this plays into the four-year cycle with Bitcoin. But I want to remind you of this. The four-year cycle, once the happening happens, it reduces the amount of Bitcoin that is produced daily, cuts it in half, and that leads to a supply crunch. And that's what moves us up to our new all-time highs. Now, we've historically went to a bear market, and then we had these big old long drawn-out crypto winners. 
as part of that four-year cycle. That part does not necessarily have to play out that way because we have so much adoption going now. Our bear market may not be as severe as what some people are predicting just because of the mass adoption. So it's too early to call a bottom by the four-year theory. But the real thing is that we are, we're enmeshed with Wall Street right now. For what we can expect from Wall Street tomorrow when they come in, we got to take a look at the NASDAQ. And this is the one that Bitcoin would be related to. It has to do with tech stocks. We can see that we came down to the trend line, bounced off of it. Price came back down to the 0.5 Fibonacci level. If it does bounce from here, we've just made a double bottom, which is very bullish that we'll be heading back up to the 382 level. Hopefully break out of that and out of this channel because seven out of 10 times, this pattern does break to the upside. And then we can come and try to work through this Ichimoku red cloud. So we may get a lift up in the traditional legacy market on Wall Street, stocks may start doing better. How long that lasts, I do not know. There is a measured move here, which does suggest that we could be coming up to these levels of 200, and that would be very bullish for Wall Street. So keep your eyes on that. We're, we're kind of in Wall Street's hands right now as where overall price action goes. Two other things that we want to look at today, the DXY, the dollar, see how that's doing, and then take a look at total two for altcoins. Here I've got the DXY, the dollar index on the daily. Like I've been saying, the dollar is looking strong and we're doing very well above the Ichimoku and it is kind of thin and going up, suggesting that we are still have some upward price action, even though we've got some cool down indicators here. I do want to draw your attention to the RSI, which looked like it was coming down and going to do a bearish cross, but then took an upturn. That is just showing some more strength for the dollar and the price action for it, it came back up, looked like it may make a double top, came down, retested that 618, bounced off of that in strength, almost making a bear flag, which is a bullish pattern and has a measured move that could actually take us up to about 108. Eight. If the dollar gets a bump up, Bitcoin and stocks are going to tumble. We've got to see if this is a bull flag that's going to play out or if we are making a double top. However, the thing to keep in mind with the double top is, is this is a higher high, not so bearish. And if you ask me from what I'm seeing with the dollar, it is looking extremely, extremely strong. Exercise caution with Bitcoin and keep your eye on how the dollar performs. Altcoins are kind of in a tricky position. I do not recommend opening up big positions for them because you can definitely expect prices to fall lower. And especially if Bitcoin just takes off to the sky, all the focus is going to be on Bitcoin. Altcoins will suffer. But as we can take a look at what's going on with total two, we got rejected. Did We did not break back into this pattern. We took a leg down to this Fibonacci level and we're kind of holding there. Currently, it is in a bullish pattern and has broken out of it. And we can take a little bit closer look on on, say the four hour to see that we've broken out of this descending wedge to the upside so this indicates that we will get a little bit of a relief rally you may see some performance out of altcoins any trades that you're doing you want them to be short term this is not really the time to build a long-term position for the traders out there it looks like we might possibly have a little leg up got a little bit of bullish activity coming in here on market cipher however the rsis are topped out it will need to cool off but if you want my personal opinion i just think it's too risky to go into altcoins right now and i would recommend focus mostly on bitcoin but i will say this even though there is some slight bullish divergence on this if we do not hold this level at 3.79 billion we're looking at going to 258 billion alts are just going to suffer so be cautious over the next few days and over the next few weeks with altcoins guys this is what i've got for the day hopefully this has given you some insight to what to look for over the next few days and possibly this week as far as bitcoin goes it really all depends on how wall street reacts tomorrow be careful trading congratulations on you guys that got a got your skin in the game on bitcoin at that excellent entry price around 17600 that's the way to stack them baby you're in profit now my name is lane your crypto road dog signing off be blessed be positive and remember you got this baby